Welcome to Las Películas Sabados Gigantes at the Cine Marijuana Theater. Yeehaw. That's right. The, 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 so like Ken Bowers there. It's Ken, right? Ken Bowers. <laughs> yeah. uh, the cinematic, the, the shitlords of cinematic scrutiny, we are uh, a collection of, um, we are a ragtag fugitive fleet of uh, f- cinema fans who gather to watch films and then talk about them. Convicted of a crime we didn't commit. Yes. Of course, <laughs> live in LA underground. <laughs> yes. Uh, if and, you need movies to review, you know who to call. That's right. <laughs> us. Uh, and uh, we, uh, yeah, then we talk about it. And right now we're doing a theme, uh, which we call Cinema Under Glass. And this current theme is Animal Antagonist. Every film must feature an animal antagonist. Or as, animals. Or animals mm-hmm. as the chief antagonist of the film. So, mm-hmm. uh, And today we uh, are here to talk about a film from 2011 called The Gray. Yeah. So before we uh, get cracking... Let's introduce ourselves. Clockwise, start with me. I'm Ed. I'm Zeb. I'm Kenzie. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. All right. And uh, yeah, The Gray uh, from 2011 was uh, Dr. Matlis's pick. Yeah. Last week, he yes. uh, That's me. emerged victorious uh, in this, uh, this battle. So uh, we'll be talking about that. But first, before we do that, we'd like to get started with a little Underberg. Mm-hmm. The original Old World Digestive Aid. Yeah. Oh, Old World. world. And it's adorable in this little hand glown glass glass bottle. Put it's got like a little hobo bag right cup. here. Yeah, I so love the, it. The, so the the the, <laughs> the cops don't don't know what you're drinking. I just love that it's mini. I just like mini. Memes. You can sneak them in all over the place. It's, Easter it's into Coachella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. prison pockets. Prison pockets. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so yeah. salud, cinema marijuana here. Here, here. Um, I might have stuck to my lip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody Sorry, who has an EMT friend <laughs> <laughs> that works in an emergency room, hard, and Zeb. they see that kind of stuff all the time. It's like that scene from uh, Ooh, Underberg Christmas Tale, or Christmas Story. Yum! Feel the Underberg um, available online. Getting closer to that truck and trailer every day. Did, I, did my cat make it in there? It I did. Take it in. Okay, it did. I'm pretty sure it did. Mm. Oh, oh my goodness! Nice. There. Thank you, Kenzie. Yay. All right. Thank you, little Mac. Save the day. So, uh, I let's. Have a synopsis for you. I would love to hear it. Okay. So The Gray is about this group of people who are in the Antarctic or some shit. Alaska? It. Yes, Alaska. Alaska. And um, they get in a plane crash and they basically have to survive in the wilderness and try to make it to safety. And there's these wolves that are like stalking them. Is Those would be the animal antagonists. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's why I say animals. Yes. Animals, yeah, animals yeah. antagonists. Um, yeah. Antagonists. So, um, Antagonizing. Not a lot of beefcake on display, at least not that you could see uh, because you would be so blinded by the brilliance of Liam Neeson. Yeah. Anybody else worth also mentioning? Also a lot of Arctic gear. Covering up the covering up the flesh. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of follow me lines. No. Not a lot of six <laughs> packs going on in the show. <laughs> Uh, uh, loincloths. And yeah. Yeah, some of those guys were pretty good looking. You did get they a pretty good look pretty at their insides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all the same on the inside. <laughs> 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 all right, so Liam Neeson then? That's it? But just him? Liam Neeson. But for no. the most part, no? Yeah. No? I just, no, I just, I just assumed that that was <laughs> all automatically oh, a no, given because he's so badass and fatherly. None of the guys were really ugly. But none of them. But would you do them? Yeah. But it, well, <laughs> <laughs> with Liam Neeson around, like probably not. That's what I'm saying. He'd be like, Kenzie, I did inside you. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. A specific <laughs> set of skills. <laughs> from his cell phone, he's all calling from inside of her. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take my park off. Uh, okay, so uh, the uh, seeds and stems on this film. Uh, this film is directed by Joe Carnahan, which is a name I thought I was familiar with. Then I looked at his filmography. And realized it's for not awesome reasons. <laughs> uh, he's you, done. You didn't like the eighteen movie? I actually <laughs> never saw it, uh, but I did see Smoke and Aces, and I thought that was pretty fucking weak. Yeah, as I recall. He, he also did the black. He's the creator of the Blacklist, I believe. Oh, is he? I yeah. know a, oh. a lot of the stuff has question oh, mark. Like uh, Narc, he did in two thousand two, and then no, um, Blood, Guns, it. Bullets, and Octane, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah, actually, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, like a yeah, lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but anyways, uh, written, mm-hmm. co-written by uh, Carnahan and uh, this guy Ian McKenzie, as well as others, according to Although IMDb. I did, I, I did like the A-Team. 
As speaking as an A team fan, it was. Mm-hmm. It, it, You've been in my office. You've seen the curtains. Absolutely. I have A team. You have A team curtains. He does. <laughs> In my office. Oh, my, ha- my hat is work. off to you, Zeb. <laughs> At work. I even have a Mr. T on my desk. Yes, yes, it's great. Uh, there, w- there, was, there was much reverence for Mr. T uh, uh, at the station, actually, in fact. Um, so, uh, and this uh, stars, obviously, Liam Neeson as Otway, uh, Frank Grillo as Diaz, and Dermot Mulroney, or Mulroney, I guess, depending on how you want to pronounce it, as Talget. This movie was filmed in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Smithers. Oh, Smithers. British Columbia as well. It was filmed in me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, we'll just get going with three minutes, three words on this film so we can get into some of the, uh, the, the more significant issues beyond our personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Matlis, as this was your selection, mm-hmm. we'll go ahead and start with you. Take it away. Uh, okay, um, yeah, picking this movie, uh, well, picking for this theme, first of all, was pretty difficult. I mean, it, Animal Antagonist, that's kind of a short list of stuff mm-hmm. to go through. And, well, at uh, least in terms of, like, stuff that y- you can take really seriously. Yeah, there, there's, there's, a lot of, there's, a, there's lot of, a whole lot of, you know, shark to puss to, <laughs> yeah. and, and stuff to get through. <laughs> but um, I, I, I saw this movie not long after it came out on disc, and, um, I, I mean, I remember it being good. Mm-hmm. I remember it being, you know, worthy for us to review, I think. But right. um, definitely upon the second watching, it definitely had more of an impact on me. It really kind of stuck with me for, you know, a good couple days afterwards. Yeah, it does. And that. Um, yeah, it, it was, I just think it was a really interesting movie on, on a lot of levels. Just, uh, well, first of all, just, you know, technically, I think it's just incredibly shot. Like the, the photography is just beautiful. Um, yes. The the editing is I think fantastic. The um the the plane crash scene and at the beginning is probably one of the most terrifying plane crash scenes like I've ever seen. Oh yeah, in, in a movie. Yes, very annoying. Uh, I was annoying. Saying, I, 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 <laughs> you're stealing all the things I'm gonna say. <laughs> Anno- annoyingly believable. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, the whole movie there's you put me on edge. Uh, is just you know brutally realistic. Yes. Um. I think the uh, the characters were pretty well fleshed out. I mean, I don't think there there was there wasn't anything, um, you know, extra to it. It, it was very kind of you know very, streamlined. Very with, lean, like the wolves that chase them. Uh, yeah, good point. I would say mm, that. <laughs> yes. Um, as far as kind of like the message of the movie, I mean, it's I don't know. There there's there's different ways. I'm, I'm just, we're gonna you know have lots to talk about this. I'm sure. Oh, in, for sure. Uh, you know, in Bulls Deep, but. Um, I found it like you know pretty existentialist. Um, yeah, that's of, one way. You know, atheistic in, in some ways. I mean, I remember you know Ed, you commenting while we were watching this, like yeah, when they're just in these impossible situations, and you know he's calling out for God, and there's like, <laughs> like no, there's nothing but the cosmos there, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And um. And wolves. And wolves. Wolves. Yeah, but just the um. You know how how individuals deal with kind of uh, you know impossible situations where they they know that you know they're they're coming close to the end and how they're personally dealing with those yeah, like tra- with, with transitioning with death. to death. Well, yeah, I mean <laughs> that was that was a pretty powerful scene, you know. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, it it kind of it kind of brings up you know questions where. I mean, it's really like a, an individual kind of uh, um, individual call. Yes. Do, when you're in those situations, like, do you you kind of have to judge? Is this a time for me to just kind of accept and and kind of go with it, or is or, it time to or fight? is it time to fight? Yeah. Okay. All you right. Know? Well, your th- your th- your, th- your three words. Uh, um. Jeez. Uh, nature always wins. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shit. Uh, all right, so that'll bring it over to uh, Chris to give us his uh, three minutes, three words in this film. That's Chris. crazy. Yeah, I just now thought of something that the one guy I realized he gives up when he has to survive. He gives up. The one dude, remember, he just sits down and he's like, <clears throat> "That's it. Like it's uh, this is it. it's done." Kids. And then the other guy, 
he wanted to give up when he was just uh, and that guy was like living life he was like excited and loved life he was drinking and having a good time partying right at that party but then uh, yeah. Liam Neeson wanted to kill himself at that party but he was alive when he had to survive that's an interesting mm. uh, sort of I uh, just thought of that right now observation yeah hmm, an interesting um, parallel but yeah uh, I love this movie holy shit I wish I would have seen it when it came out because I thought it was kind of just going to be you know <laughs> Liam Neeson versus a wolf. Like taken, taken like the wolves. <laughs> <version. laughs> something. Yeah, exactly. Like, like he's going to be on the phone the, to a wolf or something. I think yeah. it was advertised that way, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I well, think it was. I've been fighting them since you were sucking on your mother's right. teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it had a lot more appeal than that. It, it really yeah. did. Uh, it was, I mean, to some degree that, you know, he straps himself into the plane crash. And there is, he does seem to have some sort of superhuman ability to keep cool under pressure and you know make make the right decision yeah he is not prone to panicking right he he's like anti-panic or something like that but <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah no uh well he's definitely the oldest one of the group so i can see how he's mm-hmm. and and he's the the outdoorsman yeah he you was know, definitely so he's he, definitely taking well, and also maybe role. as he was that, that was close weird. to sort of death, anyways, like maybe he's sort of checked out in a way that gives him a uh, 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 gives him an ability to maintain a perspective on the situation. <laughs> that really is like you know, he's so close, more to resolute death all the time. Uh, you know, a fear of his own hand <laughs> by, yeah. by his own hand. Uh, well, because it's hard. To, it's but, hard to be. It's hard to make somebody scared when they got nothing to lose. Yeah, Inter- interesting parallels between the wolf pack and the um, the group of men. Um, you know, was there a wolf pack? Just kidding. Um, oh, shit. But uh, I loved uh, I loved the way it was shot. It was beautiful. Uh, you know, it's kind of absent of color except for blood. So it's very white when you do gray, see it, if you will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, when when you do see the blood, it's really impactful because mm. it's you know on you, snow. You've been seeing nothing but you know black and white. Yeah. Colors. Um, yeah, one of the great survivor movies. I think it reminded me of Alive, but versus wolves. Instead of eating each other, they're kind of just trying not to be eaten. <laughs> something's eating them. Yeah, yeah something's just eating them. Yeah. But um, I thought everybody in it was great. I thought they did a good job. I thought it was cool. I hated the people I think I was probably supposed to hate and love the people I was supposed to love. The yeah. ending was cool. Yeah, I thought it was uh, pretty deep and uh, it moved me. I. I, I gotta say, man, it like juicy me. fruit. The rest of the day, it's gonna move you. Yeah, <laughs> the taste of juicy fruit. Yeah, it was. I really thought about it like that night. You know? All right, it was, it was interesting. Your three words. Oh shit. Um, uh, yeah, real life drama, I guess. Uh, okay, huh? there we go. All right, well, let's uh, before all of her points get stolen because she's already expressed the sensitivity action? to oh, that. Like that. Oh. Let's jump over to. Mackenzie. Actually, okay. before, I just have one bit of trivia to interject. Yeah, please. Um, I think this was the, the, the one movie where um, Roger Ebert actually had to walk out. Oh, of yeah. I was going to talk about the movie that. after because yeah. it affected him so much. Yeah. Because it, it wouldn't be fair to the next movie that he was that he was reviewing. Well, no, it wasn't even. Yeah, it wasn't even somewhere that he was. It wouldn't it would be fair. But, like he couldn't even deal with it. Like, yeah. He's still like going. He's still dealing with what's happening in the room. I, yeah. I, I, all right. Sense, right? I mean, uh, okay. Interesting point. OK, continue. Uh, all right. Kathy, go ahead. <laughs> OK. Um, so I, I did see this when it came out. And the first time I remember being satisfied with it. But um, watching it this time around, like Matt said, it definitely affected me more this time. And it stuck with me more, as in, like, I was thinking about it the week after. Um, The plane crash scene particularly was, like, much worse this time. I I just, like, I, like, felt their fear, and I don't like that. (laughs) Is it possible you were drunk the first time you saw it? No. Okay. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that as an insult. I mean, (laughs) that's a totally legitimate way. In fact, I mean, I've only seen Batman and Robin drunk, so. Um, Uh, That's probably good. Yeah, no. (laughs) The only way you can get through that movie. (laughs) Okay, just checking. Yeah. um, And the wolves, the only way the wolves, like, weren't believable to me is I feel like all those guys would have been dead much sooner. I feel like really when it comes down to it, because of the amount of wolves, those guys wouldn't have stood a chance. 
Like the wolves would have all attacked like at once yeah, rather just instead, at of, once. instead of like going like a little bit at a time. Yeah, and some of the wolves will die, obviously, but like I feel like that's the only part that bothered me about them. Um, yeah, I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I I think it's good. And I, oh, one of the scenes that stuck with me was when the when the guy with the glasses is going across the the rope like to the trees. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he like pauses and he hears the wolves below him like howling. Right. Doesn't he seem like he just wants to let go and just die right then? Uh, well, I, I thought it seemed like he wanted to let go of his bowels at that point and, and just release them onto the wolves from sheer terror. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> the wolves love that, by the way. Per- well, no, that's no. Really, that's what they're going for. Be, well, it, 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 I, I think maybe because like he knows that he's going to die if he falls. Maybe, and that, I don't know, perhaps you're right. Perhaps he's sensing the impending uh, magnitude of their situation mm-hmm. and is kind of maybe like, maybe I should just check the fuck out now because I can die on the way down and then so I don't get ripped apart while alive. I, don't know, perhaps, I just feel perhaps. like in that moment he looked like he wanted to give up and then like he makes it across and he dies. Like, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, no shit. And in the same way that... in. In the end of this movie, I get mad that Liam Neeson wanted to kill himself and didn't just to, like, have all of this happen. Like, darn it. Maybe I should have just killed myself. Yeah, I blew, I blew <laughs> it right at the beginning. So I'm well, dying what? three days later <laughs> <laughs> after experiencing all this horror. All this terror. All yeah. Right. Um, okay, all right. Well, uh, your three words? Uh... In that stupid poem, are there three words that go together and that I could <laughs> steal right now? <laughs> what about that? Die today, like fight hard today and die. Live and die to uh, live and die today. That's live four. apostrophe and die. Live and today. die. Live and die today. Live and die today. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Nice. Perfect window. Okay, Zeb, you want to go, or should we save you for the grand finale? No, I, 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 I could go. Okay, all right, I do could it. Go. Um, like the film, thoroughly enjoyed it. When you picked the theme of animal antagonist, I immediately thought, well, there's going to be a lot of Jaws ripoffs, a la or- Orca. <laughs> uh, and then I kind of looked at you, and you looked at me, and, and we both went, shock <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But I, I've been thoroughly impressed with the breadth of animal antagonists that were displayed so far in the series. And this is by far one of my favorite films of the series. Did not see it when it came out, m- mainly because somebody ruined it for me. Not oh. ruined the ending, but like just wouldn't stop talking about wolves and Liam Neeson. Oh, <laughs> like they haven't even seen the movie, and they were just like, you know, the the wolves and. Uh, uh, are you friends with Key and Peele? It, uh, no, uh, it <laughs> sounds like something that should be on a shirt at Walmart with like an American flag. Liam Neeson and wolves. Yeah, and, uh, yeah the American yeah. flag, like some kind of. Uh, He's not American. Yeah. Yeah. and so I didn't see it no. because of that reason. I, so. I can rock that. Um. <laughs> So this was my first time seeing it. Uh, it's a movie that sticks with you. And that's a sign of a quality film. Yeah. Is Does it stick with you? Does it get you thinking? Do you expand the universe in your head? A majority of the films that are out in the movie theaters or quote-unquote blockbusters, a la The Avengers, or any Marvel film, don't really stick with you. Maybe Guardians of yeah. the Galaxy, but nothing else really uh, s- sticks with you. Yeah. I, I, Even I like, sorry, like Bridesmaids does not stick with you. Oh, I love Bridesmaids. <laughs> you would <laughs> love Bridesmaids. Or, um, or any of the Judd Apatow films. They yeah. don't really stick with you. They're, they're just there. It's kind of like having a snack. You it's eat the snack, food. you're fulfilled. But it doesn't stick with you like meatloaf it's like or the fried chicken. Cheetos. The Cheetos. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's the perfect analogy. It's the perfectly scientifically engineered empty calorie. And you eat something, yes, but then you don't really. Yeah. But this film was a fucking porterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks with you the next day. Yeah. It's like a, it's, it's, it's a hearty film. It really sticks yeah. to the ribs. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 like a, it's like a sandwich from Arby's. It sticks with you for a week until you finally pass it. Oh, no, that's fair. It really <laughs> sticks to your bowels. Arby's but, but in a good way. Bad. In a good way. <laughs> but as I said, this, this film really s- stuck with me. I just kept thinking about it. Saw it again. And again, just like any film, you go through different phases the more and more you watch a certain film. Yes, yeah. um, for sure. Like there's that one part where you're just exposed to it for the first time and you're just, your mouth's just agape in awe of the sheer awesomeness of it. And then you watch it a second time and you begin to pick up like certain nuances throughout the film. 
Uh, with that, the film is fantastically shot. Can't speak enough of the cinematography. As someone mentioned, the use of colors, the white and the gray, and then just a burst of blood when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed the death scenes because it wasn't like something gory like, oh, here's the wolves. They're attacking you. They, it's actually how the guy expressed death is. It just fades over you. It's yeah. a warm feeling. It's a warm embrace. Yeah. Uh, so with that, my, my three films is go, my three words for this film is go see now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good one. All right. Well, that'll bring it to me to close it off. I wrote a couple of notes down here. Um, I don't like uh, the way this movie makes me confront my own mortality. <laughs> it, yeah. Too bad. Um, <laughs> that'll happen. They, they should have chopped the bodies up into treat sized chunks and just trained the wolves. I don't, what the fuck? Where, come on, Very guys. What's, what's going on? Yeah. I mean, you got all this fresh meat. Chop it up and start clicking and teaching them to beg and shit with these yeah. little chunks. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, and then is it, I only have one more note here. Uh, this movie is fucking horrible. Aww. Aww. Uh, okay, so this movie is one of those... Uh, th this film enters a a select pantheon of films that, uh, while excellent in their execution, are films that I will never revisit, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for good reason. Um, I did it. I sat through it. I enjoyed the visceralness of the experience. Um, I considered the themes that were perhaps at play. I, I endured this cinematic brutality. Uh, and I didn't like the way I felt through the entire fucking thing. <laughs> so this goes up on the shelf with Grave of the Fireflies. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Precious. <laughs> uh, as was okay, a well, film. As a film that it's uh, a pretty broad. Re rega spectrum regardless, there. regardless of how badass Liam Neeson is, regardless of how uh, poignant or potent the. Uh, the, the themes uh, might be, uh, or the excellence in their execution, uh, uh, both uh, cinematically as well as subtextually within the narrative of the film. Fuck this movie forever. Uh, the plane crash is unnerving and totally realistic feeling, and <laughs> it, it fucks you up right from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, it, it just, it, there, there's no, there's no, there, there's, there's, there's no escape from the cosmic joke that is existence uh, that, that is this life that we live and this movie is a 110 minute beating you the fuck over the fucking head with it and sometimes <laughs> in the fucking balls <laughs> so it sounds like it really affected you ed <laughs> yeah isn't so, that what a good movie's supposed to do so yeah do, like, like i said this is this is do you not, want to talk about it afterwards do you not, need uh, someone to talk to i did yes in, in <laughs> fact i went right down to medical to see uh, about shrinks <laughs> Uh, following this, You're so poor. so I know, I know, right? So uh, I gotta, I, I can talk on. This is this is my fucking therapy right here. They said you do a podcast, just go the fuck home and do that. We'll send you a bill. Go on. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, no. To to make the point clear, this film is uh, uh, wonderfully successful at what it sets out to do, save for maybe uh, kind of an absolute message. Um, but that being said. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not an experience that you're gonna. Well, it's not a ride you're gonna want to fucking ride all the time. So, uh, Let's try with my the, my three yeah. words are not again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So uh, a couple of uh, dank nugs on this film, real quick, before we get into these uh, super important uh, questions I've got written down here. The weather was real. First, right. there was use of some yep. CGI in mm -hmm. the film, I believe. Um, yeah, there's some. Yeah, but that fakes, blizzard uh, at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. real. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was real. Scary. Man, the elements are scary. No, it's it, people. It, I, 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 it sounds like it sounds hippieish to say it, but I always refer to it as like cosmic, because the cosmos is like brutal, and the forces in which like, it uses to like create shit are not the kind of things that human bodies can withstand. And those forces at work on our planet, like from a scientific perspective, are like these cosmic things that you are insignificant in the face of. Mm -hmm. The wilderness and the ocean, yeah. like mm -hmm. forget it. You go from the top <laughs> yeah. of the fucking food chain straight to the goddamn bottom, and that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's bullshit. We need to fucking... <laughs> 
Time to terraform the shit out of every fucking drain <laughs> <laughs> tra- tra- the goddamn oceans. I've had it with these fucking animals. <laughs> Trying to run the snakes out of uh, <laughs> Ireland. Um, and uh, also, uh, in preparation for this film, uh, as if he's not badass enough, but uh, Neeson ate wolf jerky. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wolf jerky. To get... Uh, to get prepared for this, so uh, how would uh, that help him get prepared? <laughs> yeah, that it well made him think like a wolf. So yeah. he could better act during that scene when they cook a wolf. It, it, it well though then that would be like wolf. That well, well you would know his yeah, character would grilled, have like a, a stock of uh, wolf jerky yeah. somewhere. Well, that's it. That's yeah, salt wolf. I mean, he's shooting mm. him every day. That's yeah, his job. That's so. it. That's it tastes it. delicious. A little gamey. Uh, okay, I don't want to get <laughs> necessarily too bogged down in this, but uh, so I guess the first question we'll start off with. It seems like the most important is wh- what is the philosophical agenda here? Because I heard existentialism brought up, and that of course came to my mind. And but basically, uh, for in case you don't aren't aware. Existentialism in a nutshell is radical with radical radical freedom equals radical responsibility. Basically, you are responsible for your own actions. So there are there are, there are, with few exceptions. There, 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 are, there are a few victims in life. Uh, 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 but also then, depending on because I guess this kind of ties in with another question. Like, what do you think happened at the end? Because you stick around through the credits. Like the film ends with Liam Neeson about to go toe to toe with the alpha male of this den of, of wolves. Then it ends before the battle begins. Then the credits roll. Then you get the stinger where you see, like, it, it seems like they're both fucked up, but they're both breathing. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it just, bam, to black. So does anybody want to take a crack at sort of explaining what they think the philosophical agenda, what, what, what are we supposed to take from this film? Philosoph- like, what is Carnahan, what message is he trying to convey philosophically? With I think this? it's just, you know, trying to, put you the viewer into all these different kinds of situations and there there's all these different characters and they all react differently to that kind of situation and it's it's just meant to you know cause the viewer to relate in different ways to these characters and and you know kind of ask yourself those questions like what would i do you know confronted with that so are you what, suggesting what, what, would I be the kind of guy that like when I you know stumble into you know the the den you know so, the, the actual heart of <laughs> of mm-hmm. of all this terror that's been you know that you've been confronted with for right. the past couple of days trying to survive you know would I be the kind of person that's you know so to, are to you, go are balls you... out and just or or you know am, am, are you the kind of person that you know after uh, uh, fr- coming from this life of being an oil worker, you know, sitting on a drill all day, right, and then surviving this horrible plane crash, and then surviving multiple <laughs> wolf attacks, and then you know surviving this trudge across, you know, God yeah, knows how many knows? miles yeah. of of you know frozen wilderness, and then you know your body kind of you know breaks down, and you see this you know wonderful scenery is like okay you know that would be me this for sure. that what i just experienced was like you know the best thing that's you know the most powerful thing that i'm ever going to experience as a human right you know i'm i'm ready to die now you know there you got to ask yourself all these different kind of questions so then, like how would you relate so then you and i think that's the main message of the movie you that's think what that it's the, meant the, to do the, you how think you're gonna that, die that the point isn't necessarily to convey a specific philosophical point of view, but rather to make the viewer simply become introspective about their their own choices and their own character. Well, yeah, because I mean, <laughs> death is a huge, huge issue. It's, it's, it's a huge it's, topic. It's, 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 it's a like big, everyone it's a, has to deal with it at a, some point. It's a major transition, and you know, it's. It, I don't think there's anything philosophical necessarily about the movie. Other than, you know, just trying to get a reaction out of people. And I think, you know, going around the table, mm. everyone has, you know, has had the opinion that, yeah, this has really affected me. That's, this has stuck with me for the, you know, for the past week. And um, I, I think that's, you know, a, that's, that's a successful, um, that's, that's the movie being su- successful at what it's setting out to do. Does anyone want to weigh in, anyone else want to weigh in on this? Uh, hmm. Philosophy <laughs> bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, because because I because okay, like I. Well, I, I'm not really a philosophy major, or dealt in philosophy because it's such a bullshit field. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, nothing good has come out of the studying of philosophy other than books that made Zeb go to sleep. Well, John Locke influenced uh, the uh, the the founding. The guy documents. that died at the station. 
<laughs> oh, we had a John Locke die this day? Yeah. Holy shit. Whoa. Crazy. Is there a hatch there? Who's John Locke? Uh, he was a philosopher. It doesn't or... matter who John uh... Locke is. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is this movie but, trying um, to convey philosophically? Um, I'm not sure. There may be something there. I don't pick up on that kind of stuff. I don't go two balls deep into movies because <laughs> as a consumer of cinema, I like to escape. Sure. But in, a, mm-hmm. but in another way, if there's a movie that kind of makes me think like this one of my own mortality... There's no escaping the grave. Yeah, it's like, holy uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is it going to try to convey is that life sucks, then you die. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. See, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. I thought it was... It no, was nothing. You're, you're surrounded by beauty. You're surrounded by things that could kill you. That's, that's but the in, joke. But yeah, then in the end, you're, you're just going to die anyways, whether yeah. it's by wolves, by right. nature, by airplanes, by something man-made, something of your own idiotic... Uh, some decisions. dumb, some dipshit mm-hmm. choice you made. Like, oh, we're gonna go into that forest. We're gonna be safe there. No, Liam Neeson, you're taking them deeper and deeper inside enemy territory, which was the thing I found That's completely kind of ironic. That the guy that knows the most. It's about like the if, wolves, if you guys would have just stayed at the fucking plane crash, you may have had a, a, a fighting chance. He's like, yeah. oh shit, it's their fucking house. Like, yeah, it's right like, it's there then. Oh god, it's there then. Um, what do I do? That that was kind of that was kind of my thing. Like, okay, at the end of the fucking thing, I'm like, so like honestly, he would have been better off blowing his fucking brains out. Mm-hmm. He would have, yeah. Uh, yeah, because because I mean, unless you want to argue that the value of the experience, no matter how negative, was somehow of value to him before getting b- before leaving this life. You would have been better off putting that bullet in your brain, pal, because like you didn't. I mean, you helped other people, but you just helped them like not die yet. Yeah. And and let's assume for argument's sake that he won that fucking fight at the end. What then? You're lost in a fucking forest in the middle of fucking Alaska in the middle die. of the goddamn winter. Yeah. You've got to have some kind of like sucking wounds going on from that battle. You're dead, pal. I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck if you won the fight or not. You're done. So, like, it's like, oh, like, you know, you've got to fight until your very last breath, even if it's, like, totally pointless and, you know, your life is fucked up from day one, and then it takes another shit on you. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, I, I try to fight life, but life finds a way of fighting back. That that was kind of, that yeah, was kind of, is that alive. philosophical? Does it say something philosophical? Nobody yeah, gets out alive. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. That's you know, it. So or, well, the wolves are coming. You know, I mean, you might as well fight, right? There I guess. Of, yeah. Why? I don't know. Well... I know this is kind of fun. It's in the Bhagavad Gita, actually. Well, fucking hey, that's why. Uh, like, that's why people use this. This as guy, approach, uh, right? I forget their names. I think is I forget. And I'm terrible with the names, but the one dude has to go to war, right? And it's it's his family versus his family, right? Everybody he loves versus everybody he loves, and they're all fighting. And he's like, like uh, Krishna or whatever says to him, he's like, "That's life." He's like, "That's that's your life. That's your whole life. Like you have to, you go to war. Like what do you do?" He's like, "I don't know what to do." And he's like, "It doesn't matter. Like they're gonna fight whether you fight with them or not. You might as well just go so fight." Then, so then you're saying that the film is uh, it comes from a position of a capitulation that like, hey, you you got to fucking play. Like yeah, life is like the most fucking shitty fucked up game of dodgeball you've ever been on in. And you're the only one in there, and it's time to fucking play. Yeah, because he's like at the height of his realization, right? He's like, you know, he's like king shit on his enlightenment enlightenment trip. I'm just thinking about this because of that fucking movie we watched yesterday. We yeah. watched the uh, oh yeah yeah well, which one Holy, the Holy weird Mountain ass movie the Holy Mountain uh, Jodorowsky yeah we'll be we'll be actually we'll be we'll be doing a podcast about that too because uh, right. shit balls yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, so, okay. All right. Well, let's move on possibly to uh, to uh, some lighter affair. Um, uh, let's see. Let me go down the list. So we got those. Uh, was The Revenant a ripoff of this fucking movie? Never saw The Revenant. Next. Me either. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Um, does anyone actually know anything about wolves? And if yes, is this what it is? really be like wolves are cute like. but you shouldn't probably try to play with them in the wild well could it not be <laughs> argued that they actually tried to at all costs to avoid playing with them yeah like well unless it's in a controlled situation like a, it's a baby wolf at the zoo okay yeah that's then, the only time i understand oh. that the wolves on wall street are easily tamed uh, <laughs> drugs and, and pussy yeah, with loot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, all right. So no, I've, I, I heard that actually after this movie came out, there was some controversy involved. 
Five. Yeah, people said, but Peter or somebody said that it was giving wolves a bad name. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, motherfucker, you shouldn't be out there fucking with wolves to begin with. Yeah. Like, why do you feel the need? Like, dude, just people stay away from wild animals. Did you not yeah. see Grizzly Man? Stay the fuck away, dude. <laughs> this You're is not why I think there. there should be a sequel of the exact same film, but seen through the wolves' perspective. <laughs> and it's just them being like, animals, just, just minding their own because business. If you, if you and talk then about the parallel plane. between the wolves, the wolf pack, and the human wolf pack, right? You know the the alpha is Liam Neeson. Yeah, oh yeah. And then oh, totally. the parallels meet. What do they call that? Cross section. Sure. Yeah. Um, at the end, and I would love to see a sequel to this, seen from the wolves' perspective. Yeah. Because well, the wolves be are out there doing what nature programmed to, which is hunt, fuck, and piss. Well, it's like, yeah, yeah, you need to shelter, food. Yeah, take a shit, yeah. fuck, and and they're they're not trained. They're mm-hmm. wild wolves. Yeah. Um, and then these people just fucking crash in the middle of their their home, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah. Of course they're gonna be pissed off. They're gonna be like, "Hey, food." Well, it's winter. Yeah, yeah. hungry. Yeah. Right. Hungry winter guys. Fucking a. Yeah. Um. Uh, um. Actually, one of the like main complaints about this film from people who didn't like it, which those people are stupid, <laughs> but um, <laughs> was that the wolves would never act like that ever. It was well, that the they, wolves' behavior was so well, unrealistic. Well, Onion AV Club, go fuck yourself. They yeah. wouldn't be that that clever or that aggressive. Uh, but I'm like, uh, I mean, I still I think know, There's only one way to find done. out. Let's yeah, toss right. him in the middle of a yeah. wild wolf pack. But Liam Neeson yeah, can just survive plane crashes. Cause <laughs> he's Liam so Neeson can survive yeah. anything. He's uh, fucking quite gone gin. Isn't he I a think dick in real life, by the power of Yoda. I don't know. Has anybody heard? Yeah. Can anybody corroborate that? I don't know that I've heard that about him. he's rude in real life. Um, from the people I know that met him, he's just not rude, but kind of like Bill Murray rude. Like, leave me alone. Um, like, okay. I'm just here to buy a coffee. Sure, mm. that makes sense. Well, get down with that. We Some were people... talking about that this morning. He's not we rude, rude like uh, what's his face? Billy Corgan. No, <laughs> no, we saw him be rude one time, man. It we it, before Smashing Pumpkins kicked, they were eating at Denny's, and he fucking yelled at this chick that came up for an autograph. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it was. It was like, whoa. But Stan Lee did she should have waited until he was leaving. I know these are these are people. Like, if people bugging me, no, fucking but there's all the time. rules when celebrities are eating. You uh, like don't yeah, bother them when they're eating. Leave Come alone. on. Um, okay. Uh, well, I was actually going to ask, like, fucking Liam Neeson. I mean, fucking a, right? Fucking a, dude. <laughs> fucking a. I mean. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> well, <laughs> start starting with Dark Man, right? And then uh, whatever. I mean, hey, dude, what a Shannon badass! Lewis saved yeah. a bunch of Jews, dude. Right? No, right? He's like, he's like, he's that like, truly he's, he out Mel Gibson to Mel Gibson. He's Juice. like got all the fucking. He's got all the fucking like zip of Mel Gibson, but he's not anti-Semitic. In fact, quite the opposite. He fucking saved a shitload of them. Yeah, he's like <laughs> super of Semites. No, of Jews <laughs> in Schindler's List. <laughs> well, maybe it well, was one of Schindler's many lists. He saved, saved them from. Okay. He saved them, so themselves. I just wanted to. I was. Well, just... I, I enjoy him as an action star because in the eighties there was, you know, you had your trifecta of Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Chuck Norris. <laughs> oh uh, God, Lundgren. Uh, Lundgren. I, I hate Chuck Norris, but I will admit a a a, a weakness for a missing in action too. I got in Baby <laughs> USA on Blu-ray. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the best missing in action. <laughs> yeah, it it uh, it got me interested in the, the Vietnam War too. Actually, <laughs> I, yeah, I'd that's important. That Liam Spreads Neeson is our awareness. our generation's Charles Bronson in a way. Mm, I yeah. guess kind of yeah. Because, because with Charles, the Death Wish yeah, and with, shit. With Death Wish, when 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 Death Wish came out, like I know a lot of people could have identified with Charles Bronson because he's kind of like this everyman, but yet silent. It's like a Bernie Getz thing, right? Like a big silent type. And I think Liam Neeson's kind of like that. Yeah. Where he's not muscular like Stallone or Schwarzenegger. And he doesn't have the kung fu moves of, say, a Norris or a Van Damme. He's just an every guy that you could see having a beer with. You could see someone at your work having a Liam Neeson-esque quality. Yeah. That's somebody you can identify with. But you know that he could kick ass if, if, if need be. Yeah. Because he's got the force. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. great. He's yeah. great. And that we've way. seen that with Taken, Red Eye, or whatever that one movie was on an airplane. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't go see most of his movies. Oh, you're missing no, out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, actually, I saw this. I did sleep through it, though, but I was, I'm was. i certain I was actually drunk when I saw this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Chris, you used to be a mountain man. What is it like to live like this? <laughs> you wrote that question. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh, uh, he, Chris, uh, in uh, a foreign part of his life, was quite, I don't want to say feral, but uh, <laughs> certainly of the wilderness. Well, didn't you 
not even wear shoes until you're like five years old? Fifteen. Uh, more like yeah, more like thirteen or something like twelve. <laughs> something like that. Let's see, um, he's like Kazar. Yeah, he's like Kazar. Is it wrong right? that we all looked at his feet? When he said that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's like, is he wearing something? Now? So he yeah, is, I mean, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I just never. Well, I was. Uh, I encountered bears uh, up wolves? there. No wolves. We don't have wolves. In Were the bears California cute? Like that. Uh, He's probably running from them. Did, did they steal your pick and nick basket? Are cute. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last fucking thing they wanted. Yeah, Actually, no, no, it probably would have been the first are thing. Scary. I mean, they, what about we had the, them at the dump and stuff. What but, about the bitter cold? Um, you know, I will say this: you get used to it. If you live in the bitter cold, it's different. Um, and when I moved down here, it was real easy for me to be in any weather because I was always it was always warm to me. Uh, but uh, you do get used to it. But um, man, I'll tell you what: the wind. Is what will get you. Yeah. If it's still and it's cold, you you can get away with it. You know what I mean? Because the heat will like stay. Just you can like stay on your feet, you. dude. Yeah, I know. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and you can bundle up or you can get underneath yeah. something. But if it's wind, like the, the wind will just, it'll kill you, man. Yeah. It'll fucking kill you, dude. Exposure. Sleep, if it's wet, you're fucked. If those guys got wet, like as soon as they go in the river. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unless That's, they have like a fire right there and they can take their clothes off and dry them up, and, and, and while still dead, staying warm, dead, somehow. you don't even feel like it too. You just go yeah, to sleep yeah. That's the uh, I learned that from Survivor Man. That's the worst thing yeah. you can do in the wilderness, dude. He's an awesome. That guy's rad. Uh, did they deserve to survive? No. I mean, yes. okay. These are these are these. Well, hang on, hang on. Now these guys like <laughs> the, their their occupation at this pumping station sort of implies that these are characters that are like you know. Living on the fringes the... of life, anyways. Well, that and they're felons too, weren't they? Uh, well, well, there's that as well. Uh, so, so that that's kind of you know, are like what kind of existence are they living, anyways? Uh, and are they? Are these are people of questionable morals. I mean, uh, Liam Neeson uh, murders these beasts for a living, uh, and then they're put in this situation where they're at the mercy of kind of nature, but they're all kind of like assholes. So, like, really, did they deserve to survive, anyways? That was I impossible. take the stance of the counterpoint man from Airplane. They knew the dangers that they were going <laughs> into. I say let them crash. <laughs> Occupational hazard. They were expecting to die sort of anyways because... It's like the people right? that worked on the Deepwater Horizon. There is that risk and you take on that risk going on there. Yeah. <laughs> However, a little bit is also shared on the company's part by mitigating that risk. Sure. Uh, by having certain safety standards in place. However, uh, the airplane crash, if you were meant to go down, you were meant to go down, man. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, Captain yeah. Phillips when we were talking about how the company kind of had them going through dangerous waters. You know, this is kind of the same thing. Yeah. They just fly these people in and well, out. Well, I guess the go. company kind of did take care of them by hiring a guy whose sole job is to shoot, <laughs> shoot at the wolves, wolves that go to attack yeah, them. Yeah, like in case they're going down, better take the wolf guy with them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, well, actually, speaking of that, uh, we're almost out of time. But speaking of that, I did have a question. Uh, What's up with plane crashes? Like this is 2016, oh, dude. Um, dude. You why oh. can't they find these shits? So scary. What it the fuck? Scary. This flight, this Malaysia flight shit. This what? Why can't they fucking find these planes? Well, I, I dude? think a lot of it is. I'm telling you, is, I see these movies where they're finding pe- motherfuckers from space. ISIS. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also other like that whole Malaysia shit. Yeah, what the that, fuck? That's some next level conspiracy shit. I believe that's that. what I think. The, I believe the, that. The Ukrainian thing. I could tell oh. you firsthand that. Um, a lot of people in that town got new luggage, new clothes, new technology, Whoa. new jewelry. Because like I'm, I see in Google Maps, those motherfuckers can see to the bottom of the ocean, and with the technology, this thing's got to be these things got to be sending off some kind of fucking signal. Why can't they yeah. find these fucking planes? Yeah. But as far as plane crashes, you'd be surprised how how scary it is that you could almost get into one. <sighs> Damn it! This film film had pretty much almost erased any fucking desire to ever. Well, I again. almost got in one on on my last trip. Oh jeez! Uh, yeah. uh, we had a big Emirates plane in front of us and it left a wake. So while we were landing, the planes are like tipping back and forth like a seesaw. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> and we were getting closer that. and closer to the ground. It was actually quite fun yeah. afterwards. Yeah, after after, <laughs> yeah, after right. I got home safely and then changed my fucking shorts, it was fun to think <laughs> back I went, on. Ah, uh, fuck. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Those were yeah. my last words. Was yeah. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I couldn't help but think of that George Carlin so bit where he's got a. I, I think Sorry. it was like in, um, like what am I doing in New York or something. Uh, one of one of his specials, the, I think it was the one after uh, I, I don't remember, but he he does this bit about like planes and, and the lingo of them, you know, pre boarding and uh, all this kind of stuff. And we talked about when the masks come down, like in the event of uh, you know of of an unexpected like you know landing, 
you know, please breathe into the bag. He's Those like, aren't yeah. connected to anything. He's like, because I, yeah, he's like, totally, because I breathe normally, you know, in a in a fucking vertical, like a downward fucking mm-hmm. thousand mile an hour spiral towards <laughs> the ground. He's like, I, it's like, I also shit normally right in my pants, right? And I'm just thinking everybody must have shit their pants. Yeah, uh, I would not rule out Langoliers. Just, oh, just throwing that, that out there. <laughs> Is that, that's a uh, Stephen King? Yeah. Malaysia, Langoliers. Oh, shit. Now I'm in the dark because I haven't mm. read that book because I'm not a Stephen King guy. Or even see it's the miniseries starring Bronson Pinchot. <laughs> they could have run into a miniature black hole. Get out. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, before we get out of here, uh, one one last question I want to pose to the group here. No. Why didn't they? Well, this is actually not a yes or no question. Why didn't they try to capture uh, and uh, eat the wolves seven samurai style? <laughs> Form a circle. Let one in at a time. They all go to town on it. Eat it. Wait for the next one. <laughs> Same thing. Because that's what they did in Seven Samurai. They fucking, they, they like you. We fortify our shit. We let one or two in at a time. Savage them. Build some And spears. then fucking, and then, you know what I mean? And then let the others come back more. Why didn't they, uh, I don't understand why they didn't maybe try to employ a strategy like this. Yeah. Oh. There's only seven of them, and maybe they weren't filmed there was There was only seven Samurai. I'm just saying. <laughs> it is interesting to how each one of the right. guys died in a different way, though, now that you mentioned the Seven Samurai. Well, because they, yeah, I guess so. And we don't even actually know how Liam Neeson died. Well, he, yeah. Or mm-hmm. if he did. Right. There could have been a helicopter. Right, right, yeah. Right Who knows? Who fucking knows? I was going to say that. That's what, I, in my mind, I'm like, like, Five seconds after the film ends, it's like, like the helicopter's yeah. coming in. It would have been cool. Just <laughs> the, like the very end of the credits, you just hear the, yeah, the, faint, <laughs> and the chopster. Of the yeah, the chopster. Okay, all right. Well, uh, we uh, got to get to... Oh, I just want to say really quick before closing, I did have a note here uh, that I forgot to read for the White Dog podcast. Oh, good. Uh, the, the, scene, the sole observation I wrote down, everyone smokes cigars and has a rad hat. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so, except the dog. So just go back to last week's Touché. podcast, pause it, play that snippet, <laughs> yep. and, and, then and then unpause it. it. Yes. Then come back here to, the, to finish the two seconds of this. Yes, please. All right. Uh, so we got another animal antagonist film to watch. So uh, for the Cinema Marijuana Theater, I'm Ed. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Zeb. I'm Kenzie. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And we'll be back next week with more hijinks. Thanks for listening. Underberg. <laughs>